What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, back with the long-suffering Turd Ferguson, the GL500, now completely denuded for the world to see. I already knew I had an issue with the bike. I already knew it wasn't charging. I knew that it wouldn't start after you ran it for a while, but you could run it on a jump pack. I had my fingers crossed that the stator was still stating, and it was just the rectifier. Unfortunately, it's the stator, and that means this engine has to come out. Joe the Mountain Jedi's Beep of Doom has beeped echoing through the valleys, the glens, and the canyons with a horrible sound saying, Shade Tree Surgeon's gonna have to pull that engine out. So no time like the present, I guess. It's definitely a shortcoming in these silver wings and CX-500s that you have to pull the motor in order to get at the stator, but there ain't no use crying about it. It's just what's got to be done. And uh, there's some bikes that are worse about it, but not a lot. You know, you always gotta look at the sunny side of things. And I guess I'm looking at the sunny side. I'll get to really go through this entire engine because somebody is winning this bike and whoever wins it will have a motorcycle. N not me, but a motorcycle that Joe the Mountain Jedi has gone through completely anyway. Oh, I just realized as I'm taking this off, these are what's holding the motorcycle on here. Should probably have something else holding it up before I start pulling that off. Wow. Shade Tree Surgeon, super genius. That definitely would have been a wily Coyote move. Okay, as uh, funny as that would have been for the tube, let's avoid pulling a part off that's actively holding the motorcycle on a lift that's five feet off the ground. So I'm a little worried that all of this bracketry is also gonna have to come off. I did not realize these had a nut on the other end. I don't think this is gonna fit past this fairing bracket. That's also, it's gonna have to at least get loosened up. With the exhaust out, we're getting a lot closer to dropping this motor out. Believe it or not, even though I'm just sitting here belly aching about how we have to drop the motor in order to put a stator in it, on this bike anyway, it's really not that difficult. When the motor is a stressed member of the frame, and uh, you know, I might have a stressed member too if there's any ladies out there giving relief, but since it is a stressed part of the frame, it's really just hanging in there. So you just gotta unbolt it and lower it out. A lot easier than pulling a motor out like you would with a Harley Davidson. <laughs> Come on, come on. There we go. How the hell does this radiator come out? All right, getting closer. Our can last hose mount in there is really freaking hidden. You know, I said that this wasn't really that difficult, but I have met engines that were easier to get out of bikes, okay? It's not that difficult, but I wouldn't call it easy. There we go. And you. And you. <sighs> Before I get too much further, I wanna go ahead and drain the oil because there are parts on this that I wanna polish, so I'm gonna be taking them off. You can see the oil is pretty new, so it's a bummer to waste it, but it is what it is. Whoever gets it will get with, with a fresh oil change. I also wanna polish these guys up here, so we're gonna pop those off now. Now these don't look too bad on camera, but the problem is, and this is really indicative of like old Honda stuff, even old Harley stuff, but mainly old Honda and old Japanese stuff, is they had what looked like polished aluminum, and surely it was polished, but they had a clear coat over it, and the clear coat prevents you from having to keep it polished all the time, but once it starts to peel off, you can never get it shiny again unless you completely remove the clear coat and then polish the aluminum underneath it. There we go. Cool. I know I definitely want to polish this clutch cover too. There we go. Next up, these carburetors gotta go, both for polishing, rebuilding, and just to get the engine out. Besides the engine bolts, these carburetors are the last thing attaching this engine to the frame. As per Joe's orders, and I wanna polish these anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off instead of trying to just like force the carburetors out past this plastic and maybe break it. Never taken these out before, so, oh. They actually come out quite easily. Oh, isn't that a pleasant surprise? Am I gonna be able to take the whole thing out? Looks like it. Cool, I like that. Hell yeah. Mm, 
can just hang out up there for now. Oh, ow! Damn it. That didn't feel good at all. Give me this damn thing. Okay. Theoretically, there's now just a few bolts holding this engine in and the drive shaft. Let's go ahead and do the final drop. Really good for pulling the engine out, making things precarious, and not actually making the lift safer, you know what I mean? Come on out of there. Ugh. Hell yeah. Ooh, it's out, baby. Come on. Some bitch. Ooh, no wonder it's pulling out. There is a retaining nut, if anybody's paying attention, on the output shaft. This motor is officially out. When we say out, I mean, it's out enough for me to do what I need to do. We gotta put a new stator in it, and Joe the Mountain Jedi has also recommended rebuilding the water pump while we're in here. By the way, yes, you can win this bike, although you might not care about winning it now, but if you live in Oregon and you're at your local dispensary, make sure you buy Sugar Tree Farm, Sessions, and Brap Star products and save those receipts, because those are gonna count as your tickets, but I digress. If this is gonna be a giveaway bike, Joe the Mountain Jedi says, better rebuild that water pump because it would be a huge bummer to give this bike to someone and then they gotta drop the engine just all over again. So as he puts it, we're gonna bomb proof this thing. And I need to put a stator in it, need to rebuild the water pump, need a bunch of stuff, but I don't have any of it right now. Luckily, there's still some stuff we can do. Let's make things shiny. As I told you guys before, this aluminum has clear coat over it. A lot of old Japanese motorcycles, they're aluminum, they had clear coat on it. Shiny parts back then, shiny aluminum was really popular. It was coming out of the custom scene of the 1970s. All these motorcycles that were inspired by Easy Rider. So it was really common to have these parts on here that were clear coated so you didn't have to polish them all the time. It was really great and it made it look awesome until the sun got to that clear coat and then you can never really bring it back without completely stripping the clear coat. So if you've got a set of these, you can't make them shiny until you get rid of the clear coat. So we've got some aircraft stripper and we're gonna take these things down to bare aluminum and then really make them glow. Definitely wanna be real careful with this stuff. I got it on my glasses once when I was stripping my old XS650 chopper engine and it ate little freaking pits right into my glasses. So this is not nice stuff, man. When I was pressure washing the engine off, gee, my arms were just like burning wherever <laughs> wherever it, this like flew up onto them. So yeah, it's nasty stuff. It's the next day and it's time to crank up the maiden and get to polishing, baby. We got all that clear cut off those parts. Let's make them look good again. Because when it comes to looking good, trust me on this one, the plastic maggot needs all the help it can get. Now, I don't know if my makeshift vacuum for my aluminum dust here is actually gonna do anything or not, but I figure it can't hurt, right? <laughs> I think it's a donor. Damn, dude, that sucks. This sucker is done. Apex Forge Amazon special. I think this was like 40 bucks. I can't really give it that bad a review. I put this thing through hell. Well, an entire day has gone by because on my way to get a new rotary tool, a bunch of other stuff happened and life gets in the way sometimes. We're trying out Bauer. I'm really, really skeptical because this works off a of battery and since I have to do large amounts of polishing and I keep it running for a long time, don't know how it's gonna work. We're giving it a shot. It's from Harbor Freight, the People's Republic of Harbor Freight. It wasn't very expensive and I'll give you my honest review because I don't know Harbor Freight shit. Kind of ate through that sucker real quick, didn't it? Dead. 
So I will say right out of the gate, beats the pants off the old Buddy Bezos special. It spins so fast that I'm just smoking through these things, which is a little disconcerting because I all of a sudden realized how poorly my old Dremel was actually spinning them if this one can go through them so fast. Doing a way better job polishing, but I think I probably only got like 15 minutes of runtime out of it. Of course, that was with a battery that wasn't fully charged because I have zero patience. Now I'm going to go ahead and let it fully charge. It says it's supposed to take 50 minutes for the 3 amp battery, and then I'll let you guys know how long that one lasts before it dies. You know, I was wondering how to fill my time while I wait for that battery to completely take a charge. What will I do? What could I possibly get up to? And then I remembered for a couple more weeks until we give it away, I've got a mint condition 1982 CBX 1000, and it ain't that hard to figure out what to do after I look at that. First things first, as many people noticed, last time when I ran out of gas with the mysterious doctor girlfriend on the back, I neglected to put any gas in it so let's go ahead and take care of that give me fuel give me fire give me reba mcintyre oh i should have put gas in yours too yeah what the fuck <laughs> Once again, give me fuel, give me fire, give me your Eva McIntyre. Oh my gosh, the coffee! You have a bumpy driveway. <laughs> it's going as fast as I can without squirting it everywhere. I wish refilling my energy was this be out of gas and then someone could just fill me up and then I feel better. My man Project Pat and 3-6 Mafia said, fill her nose full of that dust and uh, you get that energy back real quick. It's only temporary though. The twin sixes, baby, 12 cylinders all told. Truly the gentleman's weapon. Riding this thing is just such a joy, such a treat. So industrious, so twee, a thousand cc's just for me. Kind of neat riding this next to a Goldwing because when this came out, this six cylinder bike came out in 1982, the Goldwing was still only four cylinders. Yes, Benelli had made a six cylinder bike and even Honda back in the day made a 250 cc six cylinder bike for racing only, which is absolutely amazing and is one of the coolest sounding bikes in the world. But this was the only one that you could buy on the showroom floor. Well, this was the last year of the CBX. I guess the world just wasn't ready. Six years later, the old Goldwing back there was up to six cylinders instead of four. Suzuki made a six cylinder bike as well. And theoretically, the Suzuki was more advanced than this one because it was a water cooled six cylinder. But I know they were 1300 cc's and they put them in their touring models, but they also made a naked bike if I'm not mistaken. On a day like this in Florida where we get so few of these days that are absolutely absolutely perfect with a bike like this which is just, I don't know if this bike is perfect but it's just it's so good it personifies motorcycles at least what motorcycles are for me which is like come on motorcycles are contraptions it's six cylinders all in a row it's such a contraption reject gizmos embrace contraptions this is what motorcycles are supposed to be about does this motorcycle need an inline six engine no it doesn't which is why they didn't stick around neither in this bike or in the Suzuki but it's the fact that it exists it's the fact that they were like you know what we're stuffing this in a motorcycle that is just what motorcycles are all about to me wait a second wait a second where was i oh yeah on a day like this with a motorcycle like this if i spent the whole day in the garage instead of getting out and riding someone ought to come slap me right in the mouth oh i don't get much prettier than this man and it is strawberry season so literally you go riding on these back roads next to the strawberry fields and look, the entire place smells like strawberries. It's really cool. If you live in Florida and it's this time of year during strawberry season, do yourself a favor and ride around the fields in Plant City. It's so nice. And speaking of strawberries, there we go. This will work just fine. Shaylisi isn't as sure about my special parking spot over here. That's mainly because she noticed that directly next to her is a PT Cruiser. And let me tell you, dude, this one hits all the points for me right here even with the pt cruiser on the dash dude she drives a kia soul and when you drive a kia soul you only get so many opportunities to punch down in yeah. the car world okay PT cruiser's one of them. <laughs> watch out dude because kia soul owners they're gonna hit you if they get the chance dude back in the garage with turd ferguson raspberry buffet over here we have a fully charged three amp bauer battery from the people's republic of harbor freight let's see how long this thing can actually dremel for with a fully charged battery I don't know how long it's gonna go for, but I'm just gonna do it until it runs out of juice. And once this sucker runs out of juice, I think I'll go ride motorcycles again.
All right, starting to look good if I do say so myself. And I do say so myself. I'm getting there, boys. Is that perfect? No, this isn't perfect. But it looks pretty damn cool to me, okay? And it looks a lot cooler than just straight up some silver paint. I'm gonna try a little bit of a different tactic with this one and just see how it works out. I'm always mixing it up because I really don't know what I'm doing. One more piece to go. What's up, Weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and if you've been following along on YouTube, you know we've been rebuilding old Turd Ferguson, aka the new Raspberry Buffet. I've been polishing up some parts, making them shiny, and I've always wanted to do one of those videos where you just, like, snap your fingers and something's just done right after you snap your fingers. I just never made one because I suck at making Instagram videos. I make YouTube videos, not Instagram videos, but anyway, I made one, and I found out that it is incredibly unsatisfying. It just was really a bummer to make because this took me, like, an hour to actually polish and make shiny and in this video I just snap my fingers and it's done so anyway now the video exists and it's out of my system make sure you're following on YouTube for the entire laborious process well we're definitely jumping from Honda to Honda today and we're about to jump on one with the same amount of cylinders that's slightly less exciting but there's a good reason for that it's on a mission of mercy you know we always have a Honda around when it's time to go get Harley Davidson parts well I might only have two carbs instead of six like the CBX and only 50% of those carbs might be working and this thing still scoots baby just uh, don't ask it to scoot too fast. Eh, a lot of people say I should uh, get something that isn't the old one carb wonder, the GL1500, the Bangkok bagger, but I'll tell you this, I just love this bike. Every mile I ride it, after I paid $1,500 for it, every mile I ride it, it feels like I'm getting away with something. I just, I love a cheap, motorcycle that you can use all the time every time i hit the button and it starts which is actually most of the time i get a thrill man and it's just the fact that this bike was so expensive brand new the most expensive bikes you could buy in 1989 and i have it now the amount that this bike would cost now adjusted for inflation i couldn't afford this bike so the fact that i own it i own something that was so far out of my reach when i was a kid so like so luxurious even though it just looked Looks like crap now the faded luxury the repurposing of things that were out of my reach when i was younger but are within my reach now it's very punk rock you know and i hesitate to use it because it sounds so cringe to call something punk rock but it is man there's something very punk rock about riding around a gold wing that i could have never afforded when it was brand new and now i get to ride it everywhere and it might look like shit, but it's still a wing man and it still works exactly like it's supposed to i get more enjoyment out of this 35 year old beat down motorcycle than I would out of a brand new gold wing. Which is why, even though we do Honda stuff all the time on the channel, um, that and a few other things and uh, maybe a few other scantily clad girls, that's the reason that Honda really doesn't want to work with me because I'm just not that interested in getting something new or even testing out something new. I like these, man. I'll take what's left over. I'll take what's lying around. That's what I like to do. I'm not saying people shouldn't buy new motorcycles. There's certainly an allure there of starting every time you push the button and being really fast and handling right I, I get it keep on buying them i don't want these motorcycle companies to go out of business but yeah i'm always going to advocate for getting something old beat up that nobody else wants and making it your own i love that dude money well wasted that's my man dude i ain't never seen no hearse with a luggage rack spend it baby the call of copper tails i pass right by it i know that there's ice cold beer in there and i want one but we're on a mission from god right now we're in ebor city baby and uh, there's usually only one of three places i'm going when i'm in ebor city copper tail brewery the dirty shame or to see the boys at the ride factory Oh, hell yeah. Brian got his Isle of Man painting done on the side. Brian, the owner, he did that himself. Oh, dude, hell yeah. Dude, introduce me to your airbrush artist. Yo, this bike fucks. I think it's a Vulcan. I'm not sure. I think it's a Vulcan 800, but yeah. 
Yeah, I dig this guy's style. Picking up some tires and always a good time to say hi to the boys and girls at the Ride Factory. What's up, bud? As I always say, there's very few local motorcycle shops that you can walk through and see everything on the floor from a Triumph Rocket 3 with a carpenter kit, a pan head, a shovel head, a CB350 four cylinder, V rods, BMWs, and every single thing in between. Just like me, the Ride Factory likes bike. Or I guess I should say just like them, Yamaha V Max over here and uh, Joe's been telling me about this one. You want to talk about a rare motorcycle in amazing shape? This VF1000R over here. Keep an eye out for the videos that Joe's making because we're gonna try to do a little bit of a deep dive into this thing. It's amazing. I don't know if I've ever wanted anything more in my life. It's a manual and it has, I have the original title and I have the original tools that go with it. No, this was in a barn. I just washed it. Dude, you gotta get this running. So I'm literally going to pick up two two strokes that I bought sight unseen that I'm very excited about. We're gonna have enough to have a, a two stroke gang out on the street. That ain't going nowhere, probably. Yeah, I could drive an actual truck to go pick up motorcycle tires, but it's way more fun to ride. Yeah, I don't need any excuse to ever jump on a motorcycle, gold winger otherwise, but also, I'll take any excuse I can get. And we can just ride, trust me, but when I can make an excuse and do it too, eh, baby, that's even better. Final verdict on the Bauer battery-operated rotary tool. It actually is awesome. This thing works freaking great. It's way more powerful than the one I had before that plugged into the wall. That one was a knockoff brand too. The Apex Forge is some kind of chinese Buddy Bezos brand. And this is much the same except from the People's Republic of Harbor Freight. But it worked awesome. It was 40 bucks and I actually got it for free. It was actually zero dollars. If you buy the battery and the charger, they actually gave you this for free. I don't know how long they're running that promotion. I figured I'd give it a shot. I've got some other Bauer tools, so I didn't mind buying a battery pack and a battery charger and getting this sucker for free. Anyway, like so far, five out of five, dude. Awesome. Of course, I've only used used it once. I thought the Apex Forge was fine too at first. You know, I just uh, had no idea it wasn't really spinning in that fast when I saw how much more I could do with this thing at a high speed than the Apex Forge. How long this will last under the abuse of polishing, I guess we'll have to just find out. I used a couple of different techniques on these. Some I did by hand, some I did completely with the wheel, but everything turned out freaking amazing. It looks really good, really pleased with it. I Every time I polish, I feel like I do it just a little bit differently than I did the time before. I never quite get like the same technique down twice. And I feel like I always kind of get the same results. It's just different every time. So I don't even know what to tell you guys is the best way to do this. I definitely feel like I got a little haze on this one. I mean, it looks really good. You could shave in it. I can see my reflection as clear as a mirror. I just feel like there's just the smallest amount of haze on it. I'm not super happy with that, but it also, it looks pretty damn good. The same cannot be said for the rest of the bike right now, but we're changing that real soon. And let's not forget about the CBX 1000 back there. If I didn't mention it earlier in the video, we are giving that motorcycle away. There's still time to buy a raffle ticket, but we're gonna be pulling a winner for that pretty soon. 100% of that money is going directly to Forgotten Angels to help end the cycle of abuse in the foster care system and get these kids their very first chance at life. They never got a chance to fail, let alone a chance to succeed. And that's what Dave and Cindy do at Forgotten Angels. And that's what every raffle ticket for that CBX 1000 is gonna do as well. Huge thanks to Matt from Amp EV. He very generously donated this motorcycle to raffle off for Forgotten Angels. And he's a hell of a dude. And I'm not just saying that because he took me on a really fun fishing trip. With an incredibly strange cut from working on motorcycles in the garage to hanging out with dudes who love motorcycles, among other things. I might've had a bunch of stuff to do on the bike in the garage, but guess what, man? When my man Matt over here says, let's go fishing. <laughs> the answer is obviously yes. Now, and David let me know that bull sharks out of any animal in the world has the highest testosterone. I said, listen, Listen up, baby, right after Shade Tree Surgeon. There you go. That's it. There, we, that's the close up, man. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, hold it a little closer.
Though I will say the fishing trip didn't hurt. Make sure you go check out Amp EV, even if it's not for you. Check it out, see what they do. They build electric engines for the kit car builder, the at home enthusiast. And even if it's not for you, go check it out. Let's show Matt some support because you never know who you might run into and it might be for them. And we can give a little bit back to Matt because he gave a lot to Forgotten Angels and you guys gave a lot to Forgotten Angels too, man. Every 25 bucks that gets donated, I think about the person out there who made a sacrifice in their life. And yeah, you might get a CBX, but what you're really doing is you're helping out somebody with less than you. And I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate that. That's gonna about do it for this one, y'all. Until next time, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Spreading far and wide Can the world oppose The deadliest of foes Shade Tree Army Shade Tree Army Who will risk it all To end the evil call of Shade Tree They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.